In this video, I'm going to show you how you can start living as a citizen of this galaxy instead of just feeling like an earthbound slave. Hi, I'm Saratoga Ocean, and I work together with an interuniversal force of nature and evolution known as Telstar. So we have arrived at a time on this planet where it is really time for us to begin living as the galactic citizens that we truly are. So in this video, I'm going to show you six steps that you can take so that you can start living this way right now. Now, step one is a very simple step. And that is to just pause and really let it sink in why this is so important. Why it is so important for us to live as the galactic citizens that we actually are. See, we are talking about a dramatic shift in consciousness. So you want to begin by recognizing why this is important for you personally. See, one of the things that I think we struggle with a lot is that most of us on this planet have our lives and our identity framed inside of the controller's agenda. And the controller's agenda is basically this. You are here to function as a worker for this agenda. Therefore, you must spend the first 20 or so years of your life being programmed by school, society, and religion to fit in with that agenda. And in addition to this, you will also be exposed to a massive level of predictive programming through things like entertainment, through the media, and through movies. This is to ensure that your subconscious mind functions as a co-creative force with the planetary controllers and their agenda. So by the time they are finished putting you through all of, all of this from birth on, they will have successfully locked you into a mental prison of their reality, most of which you don't even see because it's been so deeply embedded in your subconscious mind. I mean, we end up just thinking that that is the reality. And then we struggle to ascend and evolve from inside the mental prison of the controller's reality. See, these guys figured out a long time ago that it's much easier to control people's minds than it is to try and control them physically. So living as a galactic citizen is important because it's the first step in leaving this mental prison. Now, once you really let that sink in, you're ready for step number two, which is to take back and do this on a conscious level, take back your mental sovereignty. So first you determine you're gonna become a galactic citizen to leave their mental prison. And then once you've determined that, the next step is say, now I'm going to reclaim my mental sovereignty. It's time to recognize that you do not need the controller's permission to leave their mental prison. Isn't that totally awesome? See, if we have lost our sovereignty as human creators, it's really because we were tricked into giving it away. The moment you wake up is the moment that you have the power to take it back. Because if you had the power to give it away, even though you were tricked, you still have the power to take it back once you become aware of what has actually happened. Now I wanna point out one more really important thing here. You don't wanna make the mistake of thinking that you have to wait around for extraterrestrials or for things like the Galactic Federation to deem you to officially be a galactic citizen. That's just part of a bad habit that we all tend to have on this planet. We're always waiting for some higher authority to deem us this or deem us that or give us permission for what Ever. So it's time to stop waiting around for forces that we perceive to be higher than us to give us permission to be or do anything that is so personal to who we really are. See, as long as we are following the laws and principles of nature and creation, our sovereignty is ours alone. 
Now I want to share a little something with you just about the bigger picture of what I'm talking about. As long as we need a governing body over us, I don't care if it's at a galactic level or if it's at an earth-based level, we're going to continue to have a lot of problems. See, creation was never meant to be run by management teams. As long as you have to be managed at any level, you're never going to be able to fully reclaim your sovereignty. So you want to spend some time considering the level of mental sovereignty that you now hold. See, living as a galactic citizen simply means recognizing and accepting that you live inside a galaxy. I mean, think about this. An animal in the forest doesn't have to be deemed a citizen of the forest by anything, right? I mean, that's how it is in nature. We don't have to be deemed a citizen of planet Earth. I mean, we know we, that we are living on this planet. So living as a galactic citizen is just a very similar kind of mind shift that expands your arena of reality well beyond the confines of these Earth-based controllers and their nefarious agenda. Now, I want to add one more reason as to why this is so important. Because when you make this shift, which is a powerful paradigm shift, what it's going to do is it's going to make it so much easier for you to unleash your own power that you already have within you, but that is very difficult to understand or experience if you're trapped in that mental prison of the controller's reality. So the reason I want to help you guys do this is to take the struggle out of it. Now, step three is to take a fresh look at your mental faculties. Your mind is the power that designs your perception of reality. So now that you have chosen to establish your mental sovereignty, it's time to take stock of what you have to work with. What you'll likely discover is that you have a creative mind and an intuitive mind, and you also have a highly programmed part of your mind that has you locked into a very limited reality. So let's put the highly programmed part of the mind aside for a moment. We're going to talk about that in step number four. So the mental faculties that you have to work with are creativity, intuition, and pure awareness, or pure knowing. These are the fresh, untainted mental faculties that are always available for you to work with. Now, when you separate the programmed mind from these faculties, it will feel like a huge breath of fresh air, just clearing out your system and allowing you to freely expand your consciousness. So you want to stay very much aware of these beautiful, natural, and powerful faculties being separate from the programmed mind. Okay, so now we're on to step four. Step four is to heal your cosmic mind. Step four is to realize that your cosmic mind needs to be healed and deprogrammed from the controller's agenda and from the reality that they forced you to create in order to fit in with that agenda. See, you are a cosmic being and therefore your mind is also a cosmic faculty. So let's imagine for a moment that some extraterrestrials showed up here and took us away from this place to introduce us to another more benevolent planet. What do you think is the first thing that would need to happen? The first thing that would need to happen would be a massive level of deprogramming of what we had been brainwashed to believe was reality. But the good thing is we don't have to go to another planet to recognize this and begin to deprogram ourselves right now. See, what we might need to do on another planet, we can more easily do right here on Earth. Because we're already settled in here. We're not being simultaneously confronted with a foreign, otherworldly culture that we are not familiar with. So you want to think of deprogramming yourself as being a healing of your cosmic mind. Now, the programming that has been instilled in us is very, very rigid. It's extremely unyielding and it actually blocks our flow of creative energy. So deprogramming at this level is an act of awareness, alchemy, and transmutation. 
First, you wanna become aware of how you've been programmed, and then you want to intend the transmutation of that programming using the alchemy of light. And that is best understood as a process of raising your vibration and increasing your frequency of energy to something that is as close to pure light as possible, which can then break up and transmute any unwanted programming. See, this is the kind of power that we have when we step into who we really are at the very least as galactic citizens. Now, step number five is a very interesting step. Step number five is to understand the language of your thinking. Now we all actually think on a conscious level in the language of our choice. So it's important to understand that earth-based languages are actually extremely primitive. They're actually entirely inadequate for understanding our larger cosmic situation. See, earth languages are overly simplistic and way too cumbersome to adequately serve as a medium by which to interpret and understand our universe. See, as earth-based slaves, we don't see anything like that, right? But when you step into your galactic presence, into your um, more powerful self of who you really are, you can easily see that and it's not a big deal. See, earth languages are the product of a deeply divided perception of reality. They serve as a method of thought that consists of labels that are projected and used to identify things. So I'll focus on English as an example, and then you can easily find your own parallels in other languages of your choice on this planet. So here's something truly, truly fascinating. Our language is specifically designed to separate us from our actual reality. This is one of the reasons why we can be so easily programmed. And it's also why we don't tend to question that programming. Think for a moment about how a young child learns to speak. See, before they are taught language, their consciousness is easily at one with their surroundings. They actually have a totally clear perception of reality. That's one of the reasons why babies have such an amazing wide-eyed open look as long as they haven't been traumatized. You are actually seeing this their primordial experience of oneness with all things. Then at some point very early on, the parents start to teach the baby words. So here's a simple example of what happens. The child is taught to project words and symbols on top of things. So for example, now a chair is not just a chair all by itself. It is now an object with a word and some symbols attached to it in order to be able to identify it. What this eventually leads to is a false belief that we do not have the ability to know something unless we can attach specific words and phrases to it, which we choose from a very narrow selection of symbols and concepts. And by the way, this is how we can be so easily controlled by so-called science. Science tells us what the accepted words phrases and concepts are that we can attach to certain realities. Anything outside of those rules, we are told doesn't exist. And this is one of the main reasons why it's so difficult to comprehend that we live in a galaxy. We don't know how to attach words and phrases and meanings to our galaxy. Therefore, we have little or no real experience that such a thing is actually real. You know, I mean, probably all we ever were told in school is, well, we live in the Milky Way galaxy and here's what it looks like. And that's the end of the story. Now, before I continue, I wanna be very clear that I'm not in any way suggesting that we should not use language, we should not teach our children to speak. I'm not saying that at all, that would be completely insane. Um, we live on planet Earth, we need to be able to function here, we need to be able to communicate, so of course, we need to communicate in the languages of this planet. I'm just saying that we need to be conscious of its limitations 
and not assume that these primitive languages on this planet can just be adequate for like the whole universe because they're just not. So it's not about being afraid to speak or afraid to think in your language. It's not about any of that, you guys. It's just about being aware. It's just about understanding and recognizing the limitations of planet Earth and understanding that this is not all there is. So you, of course, you should feel completely free to speak and think and talk, but hopefully you understand the point that I'm making. You don't wanna to try to fit your entire existence through the lens of earth-based languages, because if you do, it's gonna completely impede your ability to know profound and amazing things that you have the capacity to know just with your pure intelligence and your higher mind. And that brings me to step number six, which is very, very important. Step number six is to realize that as a galactic citizen, as a galactic being, it's important to be able to integrate intelligently with this planet because this is the planet we are on right now, right? You need to have the intelligence to know that your galactic self needs to be able to integrate with whatever planet you are on, which in this case would be planet Earth, in a way that does not cause problems for the people here so that it might interfere with their evolution. And in a way, this goes back to step number five about language. Being a galactic citizen does not mean slapping a new identity label on yourself and then going around trying to convince other people that it's real. See, if you want to live as a galactic citizen, it means that you need to be willing to step into a state of advanced evolution. And here's the thing we have to understand about that. The ego is not going to like that because the ego can't go with you on a journey of advanced evolution. So you wanna be prepared for the ego to try to own your new experience as a galactic citizen. The ego's probably gonna to try to frame it and identify it in a completely superficial way and sometimes even almost a cartoonish kind of way. And if you allow the ego to do that, it's just gonna destroy your credibility. See, here's what the ego loves to do. Let's say that you have chosen to live as the galactic citizen that you truly are. The ego is likely to try and convince you to gain the agreement and the approval from others that this is true. And if you allow the ego to do that to you, you could find yourself right back where you started as a starseed or a light worker, trying to wake people up only to be told that you are crazy. So do you remember what I was telling you in step number two? You don't need anyone's permission or approval. And you especially do not need the approval of the people on this planet who are so highly programmed inside of the controller's reality. Trying to get their approval will only serve as a useless exercise that will ultimately just harm both you and them. So be intuitive, be intelligent, and be conscious. And ultimately, stay sovereign. Be sensitive to other people and recognize that each person has the right to decide their own journey. See, here's the thing. We don't need for other people to be wrong in order for us to feel that we are right. I mean, that's what being sovereign is really all about. So the best way for a galactic citizen to integrate with the conditions on this planet is to do so with love, insight, intelligence, and understanding. So I'm not saying that you have to keep this a big secret and don't ever tell anybody that you're a galactic citizen. No, what I'm saying is just be so confident in your presence and in what you know about yourself that you can intelligently communicate in whatever situation you find yourself in, in a way that keeps everything in balance and mostly comes from love and comes from an intuitive connection and understanding about that other person. So we can each choose to do or say whatever feels right to each one of us as individuals. But mostly this is really about our presence. It's about our energy, our presence, and our consciousness. If you think about this, 
living on this planet as a galactic citizen is a very different presence. It's a very different energy than living on this planet as an earthbound slave or an earthbound victim, right? Just look at those two things side by side and you can instantly see that it's really about presence and energy. That's why I encourage you <clears throat> not to make it just a label and just leave it at that because if it's just a label on top of an earthbound victim or slave, well, now I'm an earthbound victim or slave who has decided I'm also a galactic citizen, that's not really gonna help and it's not gonna help help you to evolve. So it's really a deep inner process. It's a process you can experience and go through just through your daily life as you awaken more and more because this is really about deprogramming ourselves and awakening to a much broader, more expansive, more incredible cosmic reality, which is the one that we actually do live in. So my goal in creating this video for you guys is to help you understand and make real for yourselves, make it real that you really are a galactic citizen and, and um, give you the six steps that I shared with you so that you can start to uh, put yourself through a very powerful process of making that a reality for yourself rather than just a concept or an idea. So if you enjoyed this video and you found value in this, please give it a thumbs up and share it out with anyone else who you think would benefit from this information. And be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell because I am here every Sunday, Tuesday, and Friday with all new videos. And with that, I'm sending you so much love, light, and high vibrational energy. And I so look forward to seeing you in the next video. Namaste.